You know, I think anyone who was at the protest yesterday realized that it was a different dynamic. It was more family friendly. Uh, today was uh, advertised as being different, obviously. It was a bit more militant. It was a bit more uh, aggressive. It was to disrupt the games, and I think we've accomplished that. So we're here basically just saying, uh, you know, women for Olympic resistance, women in solidarity with Olympic resistance, women in solidarity with direct action. We're here at the official Olympics cleanup crew. We're here to take care of the incredible damage that the Olympics has caused on the communities here in BC and beyond, and to resist corporatization of, of our communities and to resist Olympics on stolen native land and the expropriation of public resources for private benefit. Well, we're at the Heart Attack March, and our plan is to shut the city down this morning. We've been doing outreach for many years, for over five years, about how this money could be better spent elsewhere on housing instead of for a party and for a security budget. So anyone that has a heart has to be concerned about what's happening in the city, in the downtown east side, and just in general with people not being able to afford homes and the economy just doesn't serve everyone. It serves a very specific few. We want to defend social services that, that will offer people a chance maybe to become Olympians without having to, you know, work eight jobs. Yeah. It's, it's embarrassing. Yeah. But the government has better things to do with their money, like a billion dollars for police here, or six billion dollars for games related construction there, and it's a shame. It was supposed to be the greenest games ever. They destroyed one of the most pristine, uh, sensitive environments in the province, Eagle Ridge Bluffs. Not to mention the like, fleet of SUVs. Absolutely, absolutely. Dozens, You'll yeah. see one guy from uh, IOC or Bannock driving around in a, you know, a van that's got the carbon footprint of a building. I mean, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. It's embarrassing. It's right, such a farce. <laughs> For goodness sake, they've been having to helicopter in snow. Yes. What do you think the carbon footprint of a helicopter is going seven, eight, nine, ten times a day to fly in snow? Uh, it's, it's just, it's farcical. It's comical. I mean, it would be really funny if it wasn't so sad. And if there weren't so many people who were suffering as a result of it. <laughs> are crushed, why our education is foregone, why all our medical services, our social services are foregone so that we can pay for a party and if people want to party while we protest they can party social injustice. It sounds like a freaking hell of a hell of a show. The, the protest was trying to um, blockade the road Denman and Georgia to prevent traffic from moving the long lines, gate bridges and Cedar Sky Highway to essentially shut down the games, or at least shut down a major artery. I mean, a few folks got a bit, uh, a bit more militant, a bit more um, aggressive. That was to be expected. It was that that was kind of the point. People are mad, exactly. Um, and you know, it was it was kind of interesting to watch. We were getting funneled over the course of the day, and uh, it was it was you know the the police presence was increasing. At the beginning, it was just a few bike cops. At the end, it was riot police with, uh, you know, armed to the teeth with the uh, tear gas shotguns and the whole, you know, the whole nine yards. Of Obviously there was a diversity of tactics, there was a lot of things that happened, and strategically, whether it's good or bad, I don't know. If you look at the, the stores and the industries that had their windows smashed, 
Um, if you actually look at their history of what they've done, the Hudson's Bay Company exactly, it was the original government of this land. It was instrumental in uh, bringing smallpox to the, to the local people and, you know, policing the fur trade and, you know, the genocide that happened. Something like 90% of the people that lived here uh, were taken out. And so, Hudson's Bay has a hand in that. I think we actually lasted a lot longer than we thought we would. I think that, um, for the most part, when we were more or less invisible to the greater part of Vancouver, it was going really well. We had our signs out, we had everything going, and they knew they had to stop us, they were waiting for us, and they did their job.